Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be replacing the front brake pads and the front rotors on this RC350 F Sport model. Go ahead and take a look under the hood. And first and foremost, I want to take a look at the brake fluid level. I want to make sure it's not full because when you do replace the brake pads, the fluid can overflow. This one's in between the minimum and the maximum, so we should be good. Let's go ahead and raise the vehicle. So to start this job, we're going to go ahead and remove the front tires. So first, what you want to do you want to remove this retainer clip and like a pocket screwdriver type tool shove it in there pull like that there goes the spring and the pin removed next thing we're going to do is remove the brake pad the screwdriver, squeeze it in between the pad and the rotor, just kind of go like that, squeezing the pistons on the caliper. So, like I said, we're replacing the rotor, so the scratches won't, won't affect it. So once you squeeze in one side, you pull it out, and do the next side. So now that we have both brake pads removed, we're going to remove this caliper by removing two bolts in the back. These are the two bolts, and they are a 17 millimeter bolt. I'm going to grab my socket and my air gun. We're going to remove that. Now both bolts are loose. You want to remove one at a time. And while you remove the last bolt, you want to hold on to the caliper so it doesn't fall. Okay, so I went ahead and removed the caliper and I have it hanging on this hook on the upper control arm. Next thing we're going to do is remove the rotor. In this case, it's already loose. But let's say your rotor is stuck to the hub. What you do is you screw in a bolt in here and tighten it up. And what it will do, this bolt will push the rotor out. We wouldn't have to do this in this case. Maybe on the other side I'll have to. And if it does, I'll show you how to do it. So here now I have the rotor removed. Before I install a new rotor, I'm gonna go ahead and sand down the hub as much as we can. Clean it up. Now I use my air wire tool. And let's say you don't have access to air tools. You can use regular sandpaper, sand it down all around. Or even a handheld wire brush. Okay, so now we're gonna get ready to install the rotor. One thing you wanna make sure is you install the right one on the right side. Because they are different part numbers. This one right here, front, so you see the LH that indicates left hand. This is the left side. This is the right side. Let's go ahead and open it up. Take a look at it. Okay, so here's the new rotor. Before we install it, we're going to have to Spray it down with some brake cleaner. Wipe down any imperfections. Like this right here. And do the front side and the back side. Mm -hmm. 
we're gonna install the new rotor we want to make sure these holes right here correspond to the holes on the rotor we gotta put on the brake rotor and to hold it in place I like to screw down a lug nut onto here by hand just to hold it keep it straight just like that keep it from moving the next thing we're gonna do we need a special brake tool to push in this piston into the caliper so you can install your new brake pads otherwise it won't fit so this is the tool that I'm going to use there's many different tools you could pick something like this up at your local parts store to squeeze in the pistons on the brake caliper you can see I use the old brake pads and the tool is inside and as I wind this the tighter it gets it's going to open up and squeeze in the pistons on both sides after I just finish squeezing in these caliper pistons back in you can see they're nice and flush and then go on to the next step so before we install the caliper I like to get this wire brush and clean this surface where the brake pads go on top too get it nice and clean to get optimum brake performance alright, clean the surface area where the brake pads go on the top and the bottom and now we can go ahead and install our caliper we're going to go ahead and tighten the two mounting bolts for the caliper 17 millimeter. So the torch spec for the caliper bolt is 100 foot-pounds. Go ahead and torque it. When you're replacing the front brake pads or any brake pads, you want to make sure you get new anti-squeal shims to prevent any noise. And I'm going to show you how to install them right now. So I get a little bit of grease. I'm going to put it here. In the holes and all the brake pads. Now that I've added grease to the back of the brake pad with the shim, put it on like that. Any excess grease, you want to go ahead and wipe it off. So before you install the brake pads, you also want to add a little bit of grease to these contact points. Right there and right there is where the brake pad will make contact with the caliper. You want to do it right there on all the pads, on the top and on the bottom. This is how it should look after you're adding the grease to the brake pad. Try to zoom in so you can see it. You don't want to use a lot of grease either. Just little dabs. You want to make sure it's the brake grease you're using too. And install the brake pad. The brake pad with the indicator goes on the inside. So we'll go in like that smoothly. Now we're going to go ahead and install our outer brake pad. Once we install the brake pads, we're going to put on this brake spring right there. While we hold it with one hand, we're going to slide in that brake pin through the hole and through here on the brake spring out this hole. So since we did reuse the brake spring and the pin, you want to make sure you clean it nice and well with the wire brush, sandpaper I use my wire wheel once you have that installed, the last thing you do install this bad boy retaining clip into that hole right there let's see if I can get a good shot, boom there that's it
So that's how you do the front brakes. After you're done, you want to wipe down with a rag any brake does, brake dirt. Got some down here, so let's go ahead and wipe that off. And then you do the other side, same procedure. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we'll move from there. So I just finished doing the other side. Same procedure as the last side. And we're gonna go ahead and put on the front wheels, lower it down and torque it. Okay, so we're just about done with the brakes. We lowered the vehicle and torqued the wheels to specs. Um, one important thing before you go out on your road test is you want to pump the brake pedal a few times. It will be low the first few applications, but it should go back to normal. Once the brake pedal is back to normal, you want to check and adjust your brake fluid level. Ours is at the max level, which is just where we want it to be. Now it's time for our test drive, which is one of the most important steps. During this process, we want to check for any abnormal noises or feeling in the brake pedal. We also want to break in the new pads. The way that you do this, you do 20 to 30 slowdown stops from 30 to 50 miles per hour. It's an important step in breaking in the pads and you also want to avoid any hard braking or panic stops as that can affect it. So without further ado, Let's go ahead and go on the test drive. So I just got back from the test drive and I'm happy to say that the vehicle is braking smoothly. No abnormal noise or feeling in the brake pedal. So that'll be it for this video. If you have any questions, you could comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos.